So yeah, and I'm sure when he told the story in French and then it got translated into into English, you know, there's a there's a little lost in translation there. But I'm sure he understood what was going on. He wanted to go to the hospital. <clears throat> What was your immediate reaction? You had a conference call with him the day before. Mm -hmm. And what was your immediate reaction when he tried, when he broke this news to you that he wanted to take some serious and wanted to take some time away? I said, cool. Yeah. Me and Lorenzo both said, cool. So here's what we'll do. So we started mapping out the plan. Did you run it by him? Did you tell him what you would do? Was he curious at all? Mm -hmm. He found out, like, the rest of the world. Yeah. On the call. Was it an easy decision? Yeah. Hendrix, Lawler. Yeah. Dana, yesterday. Sorry, er, early, earlier in the week you were hinting that it uh, kind of being coy in terms of the potential of what kind of announcement that was going to be, saying that he was at a mall, just going to, who makes a major announcement there. Did you know uh, going into the week uh, the state of what that announcement would be? Or No, he was on vacation, but I knew that that was just a mall appearance that had been planned months before. That wasn't some, it came out that he had set up a press conference, which wasn't true. Oh, okay. the, 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 the plan was always, he came back from Dubai on Wednesday and was to have a conference call with us on Thursday. Yesterday, John Jones, who was somewhat affected by this because his fight got pushed back, said he was unhappy about the fact that his fights kept getting announced. He felt like it was sort of misrepresented. Um, did, he, did he mention that to you at all? No. No. Because he feels like he got some heat for the fight, keep, you know, continuing to get pushbacks so people are kept saying, oh, you were supposed to fight 169, 170, 171. Well, he accepted the fight in February. Accepted February 22nd and wasn't ready. You know, what are you going to do? Do we have a location for that fight? For John um, we do, but I can't announce it yet because we're still working on it. I'm working on the, uh, on the deal over there, so as soon as we get the deal done, we'll announce it. Dana, do you have any idea? I'm sure you don't, but just if you don't, just give us like a gut feeling. Do you think George will express any interest in being at the Hendrick Lawler fight? Do I think he'll what? Have any interest in attending? The I don't know. Fight? Yeah, I don't know. Probably not. It sounds like he wants to get away. Like I said to him earlier, I said he's got to he's got to fix the zoo first. Once he gets the zoo straightened <laughs> out, he'll probably be you know uh, focusing on fighting again and and and. Uh, and trying to regain the title. Do you think you'll monitor, like check in with him periodically to see how he's doing, how he's feeling, you know, get his pulse? No, nope, I'll leave him alone. I'm gonna leave him alone and let him do his thing. I, I don't ever like, you know, when a guy gets done fighting, you know, I don't, I don't bother the guys until it's time to fight again. Let them go, let them disappear and do their thing, and and then we contact them when it's time to work again. Do you give you any indication that you know his life was becoming a zoo? I didn't know that until that night, till the night of the fight. Hmm. So there was no sign beforehand that he was sort of... He lives in Montreal. Yeah. <laughs> I live in Las Vegas. And I'm dealing with, you know, 500 guys plus running a company, plus flying all over the world. You know, no. Unless a guy calls me and tells me, listen, and I get it a lot. I get guys who call me and tell me they're having personal problems and they need help with this or that. or You know, unless I get that call, I have no idea what's going on. I mean, when I film The Ultimate Fighter, I don't know what goes on in the house until you do. I don't even know, unless something real bad happens, and I have to go over there. Do you think he'll revisit the Matt Brown Condit fight now that Diaz is on no. the table? No. He has two herniated discs. It's, you know, that's not like, uh, you know, it's not a simple injury. That's, the, that's serious. But you still want Condit to fight on that card, maybe to be Condit in Condit will fight on that card. I just got to figure out who now. Were you surprised when Diaz said no? No. <laughs> Nothing surprises me. What was the conversation like? Huh. I said, what do you think about this fight? You like it? Well, I, I had texted him first. I had texted him and we were going back and forth on text. And I said, well, let's hook up Saturday. Hmm. And we got him and brought him back in the room. And I said, so what do you think of this fight? He goes, I don't like it. I said, well, that was quick. <laughs> that was an easy conversation. Did you ask why? The whole thing was... Because you would think he would like that fight just from the first fight and everything that happened afterwards. Did you ask him why? No. It doesn't matter why. He just didn't like it. So, is that, cool. that, is that frustrating easy. to you at all? That I mean, it would seem like it'd be easier. That's a guy that likes to fight, you know. Yeah. No, it's not frustrating. You either want to fight or you don't want to fight. If you don't want to fight, you cannot force a guy. Say, listen, do this or do that, or say, how about if I do this or how about if I? If they want to fight, they want, they're ready to fight. There's guys that are chomping at the bit. If Tyrone Woodley texts me one more time, <laughs> I mean, the guy can't text me. Uh, I mean. I'm, I'm not kidding you. I'm not being a, a promoter here. 
he must text me 15 times a day. And then once this whole thing went down with George St. Pierre, boom. He, wa he wants every fight. I'll take any fight you want to give me, I'll fight. Da, da, da. You know, so there's guys like that out there. So those are, the guys, those are the guys I want to deal with. Those are the guys I want to hear from. You know, I love Tyrone Woodley. Love it. Will you give him the fight? Yeah, we'll give him a fight. No, the Condit fight. No, he's not ranked. Is it safe to say if Con when, whoever Condit fights is the number one? Yeah, he's going to fight somebody. But yeah. I mean, number one, like if he wins, he would get the next yeah. shot. Yeah. Yeah. Someone said Jake Ellenberger, but he's injured. Uh, yeah, right. Have you talked and the, to him? And the only reason that we haven't talked to anybody, I just talked to, to Nick Diaz. That's who I had my mind set on, and uh, that didn't work out, so back to the drawing board. But he did say maybe in May he'll come back? Mm -hmm. Why May? <laughs> I didn't interview him. Oh. <laughs> I fucking asked him. He gave me answers, and I said, okay. But, then he walked. but at this point, will you stop bringing fights to him? Yes. Just I told him that. Okay. You text me when you're ready to fight. Okay. Because just to be clear, you've offered him what two fights now? Um. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. Because there was one he said he didn't have a manager. That yeah. Was, that was the other one. Okay. Those, those have been the only two, right? Yeah, I don't remember, but yeah, probably. He's gonna text me when he's ready. With, with GSP being out, I know this is very hypothetical, but he comes back. It's gonna be a huge moment for the UFC. But he sounds so weird about the whole title thing. Do you think you would just throw him back into fights again, or, or would you want him to be like again? Right back in that that's being lost in translation. He's, it's not. There's nothing weird about the title. It, it's about his personal life right now. He's he's he's. Uh, that's what's bugging him out. His personal life is bugging him out. And he's got to fix it. And once he fixes it, you know, I'm confident he will come back and we'll go from there. You said that the situation wasn't that serious with him. Do you think he's overthinking it, or is it really? Um, well, apparently I was wrong. You know, it's it's that it's that serious to him. To me, I, I mean, for, for 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 something like that, I was thinking, you know, but yeah, but again, you have to look at the entire picture. I told you guys many times, including tonight, George St. Pierre could retire today, and and uh, he'd be fine. He's never gonna have to work again. He's never gonna have to do anything again. So, um, he's in a position where he can take off as long as he wants, straighten his life out, and wait until he, he's 100% he's focused to come back and fight. With the, uh, the injuries you've been dealing with at heavyweight and uh, lightweight with Anthony Pettis, what, is there a timeline? I know you said you said timeline for guys to defend the title. Is there a timeline on like introducing interim titles? Because I know somebody was mentioning like Fabricio Verdun was gonna wait. Would you consider doing an interim title for the heavyweight with that, or is no. that? No, we, we know when Kane's coming back. We know when Pettis is coming back. It's just, uh, you know, we do those when we don't know when somebody's going to come back or what's going on. Um, but we're in a position now. I mean, look, look at, look, I mean, look at the George St. Pierre situation. We didn't. I, I didn't tell George. Listen, you're gonna, you're gonna uh, give up that title. He, he gave up the title because he knows that it's the right thing to do. Um, you know, when George. One of the biggest moments in George's career and when everybody started to love him was when he dropped down on his knees and said, please give me that, that belt, I want it so bad. Well, there's a whole roster of guys that feel that way, you know, and, and to put that belt, you know, on hold until uh, he came back, it wasn't the right thing to do. And, and, you know, I respect him for doing it. Never once did we tell him that that's what he had to do. He just did it. On that same kind of train of thought, you have the flyweight division with guys like Zach Bukowski coming in and Ali Babatinov that are both new and making an impact. Where do you see them stacking up, getting closer to a title shot or towards somebody like the I have no idea. I mean, it's going to depend on who they fight next. And, you know, they got to fall into the pecking order and work their way up. And, you know, or crazy things happen sometimes, like people get hurt and, you know, you never know. Anything is possible in this business, but. Normally, you, you go with uh, up, up the line, the rankings. Dana, yesterday you were wearing a Mark Hunt versus Bigfoot Silva 2 shirt, yeah. which uh, was interesting on many levels because uh, you said that rematch isn't happening anytime right. soon. So what's the story behind that shirt? That was my fantasy t-shirt. Right. <laughs> how, did, how did you get that? Where, where, where did you make that? Roots of Fight? Yeah, the Roots of Fight guys did it for me. I was going to do it, and uh, I, 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 uh, I talked to him, and he said, oh, we'll make that shirt for you. They made a they made a cool hoodie for me too. I'm wearing the hoodie out of here tonight. Yeah, um, I love that fight, man. I love that fight. Literally, I, I I was in bed 
for the next four days, every morning when I woke up, as soon as my eyes opened, the first thing I thought of was Mark Hunt and, and Bigfoot Silva, man. The fight was so awesome. Does that mean before this is all said and done, you need to see that rematch? Is that what you? Want? I heard Mark Hunt say that he wasn't even interested in the rematch. I heard that he had Both said that somewhere. That. Yeah, I bet. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want that rematch either. Um, you know, and may maybe they're right. Maybe it is. Just leave that alone and let it. You know, who knows? We'll see. We'll see where everything plays out. The, the, the thing about a fight like that is, you could do that fight anytime. It's not like something like the belt is at stake and all this stuff. It's just one of those fights that could happen anytime. It would have to be five rounds. You couldn't do like on a pay per view yeah. where it's three yeah. rounds, right? <laughs> After going. Yeah, I don't know. It's just that was just my fantasy T-shirt. It's just me showing respect to that fight and how yeah. much I liked it. Is it accurate that the uh, the price of the pay per view for 168 would be five dollars more? Is that true? Did you just find that out? No, but you know some providers have different prices. I mean, is this an across the board? Uh, yes. Thing? And why? Because. Is it just for the, no, just that fight. Yeah, because we had we we had some guys got together in the office and decided to do that. How do you determine that this is the fight that should be? I mean, obviously on paper it's. A good I don't fight. know. I didn't determine it, so. Are you okay with it? Yeah. But five bucks. That, get a couple more friends. Have them come over. But one sixty nine, it goes back to for you. Right. It goes back to normal. Mm -hmm. This is the first time you've done this. Raised the ever. Ever. Yeah. Well, it's not the first time we've raised prices. No, no, no. But for a specific. Right. And what has the uh, the feedback been? I haven't heard any feedback. Oh, really? I'm sure a lot of people aren't uh, thrilled about it, but what are you going to do? What are you going to do? How do you determine $5, $10? Like, where do you come up with I have no idea. Who said you didn't make the decision? Who did? Lorenzo. Lorenzo? Right, so. Yeah. Okay. David, you told us you were upset uh, with Cody McKenzie's wardrobe malfunction earlier tonight. Did it bother you at all that Mac Danzig had the knock for sales across his shorts? No, he made that pretty clear at the press conference right. that he wasn't for sale. Right. It didn't yeah. bother you in terms of how that might be looked at by sponsors, you know, of no. other fighters. Listen, everybody has their own personality and their own reasons for doing something. Um, you know, I had heard that he got offered something and turned it down. Uh, somebody had told me. You know, I just think, you know, he's a great dude, but when you get offered money to, you know, take it. You know, the, 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 in this business, like I was saying earlier, this business is, the window's that big. You know, if somebody offers you, take it. But if he doesn't want any sponsors, that's his right. I mean, he, he can go sponsorless forever if he wants to. He's had a pretty tough run lately. Do you think this might be the last we've seen of him? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I don't make those decisions right now. You know, all that stuff happened at 167, and you, you had to said what you had to say on the Nevada Commission. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like you spoke to Francisco Aguilar a couple of days after that. I mean, mm -hmm. do you think that anything is really going to change? I mean, what kind of conversations do you I have? do. I'm actually very confident that, uh, that things will change. I think things are going to get better. I mean, the fact that I showed up here in California and the executive director said that to me is awesome, man. And, and uh, I really appreciate it and respect it. Um, what did he say to you? He said that, uh, I just want to let you know that we have all the best officials working here tonight. And I like how they had... Uh, McCarthy and Dean going back to back on some fights. You know who the good referees are. You know who they are. Do it. Put the right guys in there. It makes sense. You know, I'm not working too much. Everyone, they're moving around. They're watching. These are the guys. These are the, these are the best guys. You know, John McCarthy and I might have had our our moments throughout the years, but I'll tell you what I love about McCarthy, and it happened again tonight. When John McCarthy is in that octagon. He is in absolute and total control of it, all right? So there was a headbutt. Who, who headbutted? Lozon. 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 Okay, so Lozon headbutted. He stopped the fight, and he said, watch your head. And he's telling him, watch your head, watch your head. Everybody in the arena knew there was a headbutt, and everybody on TV knew it was stopped, and there was a warning for a headbutt. That's what you do. That's that, when, you're, when you're the ref, you're in control. You're in charge, you know? There are other people who ref that are just completely not in charge when they're in there and they make calls out of the fucking blue. They don't warn people or, and if they do, they don't let everybody know that they've been warned. You know, John McCarthy has control of that octagon. Uh, um, Herb Dean has control of that octagon and makes great decisions. Are they perfect? Are they gonna make mistakes sometimes? Of course they are. But it's, it's hard to argue that they're the two best in there. And then from there, you go down and there's other guys in line on, on how good they are. So. As a commission, you want to have the absolute best 
refing the fights in your state so that there's no, and judging too. So you've been critical this past year of the Nevada Athletic Commission tonight paying compliments to the California Athletic Commission. Does that impact what a busy 2014 is going to look like in terms of producing more fights here in California? No, I mean, we're going to, we're going to still continue to do what we do. Um, and, and somebody asked me earlier if we're not going to do as many in Nevada. Of course we are. We're, 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 that's where we live. That's our hometown. That's the fight capital of the world. Um, you know, I've just been screaming for justice, man. For, for, for I, I hate when you have these guys... Um, who work so hard and train like they do and every fight matters in their life and how much money they make and sponsorship and their legacy and the list goes on and on. Let's get it right. The other thing that I, I talked to the Athletic Commission here in California about is, you know, there's nothing wrong with saying you were wrong once in a while. You know, why not have instant replay? The NFL has it. Other sports have it. Let, let's have something happen. And if a, if a ref makes a decision, Let's not let that be the end-all, be-all. Let's look, get, get, get a team of the commissioners down there to watch the replay, and let's make the right ruling. Let's overturn what was called during the fight because nobody's perfect. Referees are, are going to make mistakes. There's nothing wrong with saying, oops, we made a mistake. Let's overturn it. Andy Foster was a, performal, uh, a professional fighter for a while. Do you think most people in the Athletic Commission should be involved in MMA and so I do. I, I think that you shouldn't even be refing or judging unless you've been involved in mixed martial arts. You know what a guillotine choke feels like. You know what it feels like to be in a leg lock. You know what uh, you know. You know when a guy is transitioning from one submission to another, and you know, you know that there are people that are in there right now that have no clue, that don't know that. <clears throat> David, so this is uh, your ninth event on Fox. First one was like felt like a huge deal, and there were a lot, you know, a lot of emotions involved and whatnot. Does it still feel like a big deal now, or does it just feel like you know just another big fight? Does, does, does the Fox fight feel different than any other yeah, fight? For I you? mean, yesterday when we went into the locker room after the weigh-ins, I mean that's what we talk about, me and the fighters, on how what a big deal it is to fight on Big Fox, you know, on, on open TV, and I, and I think what's even what's even way cooler is the fact that we come into Sacramento and we're, we're on a fight or, or Seattle or Chicago or, or all these cities that we go to on a fight that is broadcast on the biggest network in America and you do a million dollar gate a million we did almost a 1.1 million dollar gate here you know um, so to have the success with the gate the success on television and and these fighters to be able to be exposed to as many people as they are on Fox it's a huge deal don't forget, I've been here for 13 years when we weren't on friggin' pay-per-view. So it will always be a big deal being on Fox. Typically the December, January, or I guess historically in this short run, December, January shows do very well ratings-wise during the football season. Do well, there was, a, there, was a, uh, there was a blizzard on the East Coast. So hopefully exactly everybody was trapped in their homes <laughs> watching Fox tonight. Do you, do you, get, do you have any um, expectations or do you know how it was trending or anything? I have like no that? idea. Do you get that? No. no clue. Any word when you're going to come back to Southern California? Um, yeah, I mean, we'll be back in Southern Cal in 14, whether it's L.A. or uh, Anaheim or maybe San Diego. How many uh, Ultimate Fighters are going on right now or any? <laughs> uh, right now, no. yeah, right now there's none. We, oh. We've wrapped them all. Uh, China is wrapped. Uh, uh, Canada versus Australia is wrapped. Um, the United States just wrapped. And we're... What's about Brazil? Brazil is getting ready. Brazil will start shooting again on January, I think. And we're getting ready for Mexico, too. Huh? That's the in Vanderlei? Yeah. Yep. Do you know where that will air in the U.S. yet? I don't. Did China start airing? No. China's airing in China? Yeah, China, well, China got leaked. Oh. China leaked here in the United States. Episode one went up on the Internet. How? Oh. Good question. In subtitles. Oh. Yeah. When will you know about the uh, women's straw weight coaches for top 20? Till, not until it gets closer. As we get closer to it, I mean, that thing doesn't start filming until May. So, so many things will change over the next, you know, several months, and, and we'll figure out who the coaches are. Do you are. anticipate having women for that or men? Probably men. 
Yeah. Did you say Tough Mexico was set for filming? I know it's been talked about for a while. Yeah, yeah, no, we're getting ready to do that. I can't remember what the date is on that one, but we're we're getting ready. Does yeah, Kane's yeah, injury kind of slow things down there? I mean, I know you yeah, talk. Yeah, so we, me and Lorenzo were talking the other day about going to uh, Mexico without Kane, but I just don't think it's a good idea. I say we wait. Who's coaching uh, Tough Mexico? I came back to um, the leak footage from, from China knowing how uh, the restrictions they have on, on content and distribution there. Does that raise serious concerns considering that you're tra making that transition to uh, uh, online uh, content with your new subscription base? How are you going to deal with piracy um, you know, in the future now that yeah. you're... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always going to be an issue. It's always going to be something that we're going to be battling and trying to figure out, um, but it's not going to stop what we're doing. Was there a plan that Lorenzo rolled out when he uh, uh, when, and sent me the announcement for the subscription base? For um, piracy? Or, or just, I mean, it, uh, can, uh, a plan, uh, like an emergency plan, like how you know, uh, folks can potentially be paying fourteen ninety nine a month. And other and people are stealing it? Watch it for free, distribute yeah, I mean, the, uh, this is no different than what we do now. I mean, yeah. you got people that are paying $5 more for this next one. Sure. And, uh, <laughs> you know, pe people could steal it. You know what I mean? When does Tough China start airing, though? Like, how, was it soon? Yeah, it was this week. Yeah, well, do you know the date on that? Anybody? Tough China aired, uh, the premiere was a week ago. Okay. There you go. So did it actually leak, though? Cause it did leak. It did leak, okay. Do you know how it did the first episode? Craig, how did that episode leak? <laughs> how did it leak? Yeah, how did it get up online with, with subtitles? We don't know definitively. Do you know how it did the ratings? It's basically a I Nike know. shorts I issue. Know. We don't know how that happened either, but it did, right? <laughs> yeah. But just out of curiosity, was it the same guy who... Let Dennis Holman go out. You know. Is it the same guy that what? <laughs> oh my God. And let, no, different guy. Different guy. Different guy. This one was actually worse. When did as weird as that sounds. Is Lyoto against Mozasi like a top competitor fight? That's a huge fight. I love that fight. That's, I love that fight. Yeah, that's, a, that's another one that I'm really excited for. And I'm excited to see Jacare Ray fight again, too. Guy's been a beast in his last couple of fights, so that's a fun card. I'm, I'm looking forward to that card. When, when is going to be the announcement of Swords, the, net, the, uh, inter, the internet network? You know, I mean, is it going to be in the next couple of weeks? I mean, it's pretty much got to be here if you're starting January, right? Yeah. When's, yeah. Craig, when, when, are we, when are we launching the network? Do we have a date for that? January 4th. It'll be live. We'll have a presentation at 168. For the 168 week. will be a presentation. Yeah, the, the Gustafson fight against Manoa as of now is supposed to air on that exclusively, right, for the U.S. market? Um, I don't know. That's what was said. Okay. Um, so he's coming off, you know, arguably one of the best fights uh, of the year, of all time, against Jones. If he wins, he'll fight for the title. Is there any concern that the, the audience that will see him will be lesser than what just saw him or what could have uh, seen him on, on Fox Sports or anything right. like that? When, when you're doing the things that we're doing, whether it's, you know, launching Fox Sports 1, whether it's launching a new digital network, you have to have the balls to go out there and, and take your lumps, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, probably, or maybe not, I don't know, it depends on how successful this thing is. Um, but, but yeah, this is the, these are the t type of things you have to do when you're trying to grow your business and do new things. You have to take risks and you have to take chances. Uh, speaking of business, Mr. White, uh, there was something in the new stadium that you're going to readdress the sponsorship issue. Would you care to comment on that? I didn't say that I was readdressing sponsorship issues. I said that, that there was that, that uh, a lot of guys are having problems getting sponsors. You know, the, the economy isn't getting better. The economy is horrible. And, uh, you know, people aren't out there spending money like they used to. And they're not sponsoring fighters. And I think a lot of fighters are getting frust frustrated, you know, trying to get sponsors. I said, we figured out a way to fix that. That's what I said. And uh, in light of the uh, Cody McKenzie situation, will we see the UFC going to, like, uh, set uniforms or set, uh, set shorts for the blue and red corner, maybe in the future? Anything is possible. Dana, I talked to Chris Weidman yesterday, and uh, obviously he's heard a lot of the comments about Anderson, you know, his foot was off, that's the reason he lost, and all these different things. He said he's going to finish him and do it more dominantly this time. I mean, how big is that for him and also the attention? Because, there's all, again, the attention's back on Anderson. You know, what did he do wrong? How can he fix it? I think Weidman's a little irritated that, you know, he's, he's maybe having some of that taken away from him from the first time. I night. can't fucking wait <laughs> to see this fight. I can't wait to see this fight. I literally can't wait to see this fight. And I, and I keep catching myself in this 
uh, place where I'm not talking about the rest of the card <laughs> and all I could, but all I care about is I want to see that fight so bad. I can't wait to see that fight. That's all I can say. I mean, I don't even know what to tell you. Yes, the foot was in the wrong place and he didn't take it serious and this and that and, you know, it's just all the questions and, and the way that that first fight ended and, you know, it's just, it's awesome. I, I can't wait to see it. I can't wait. I mean, would you say, how many of you guys are doing this right now because this is what you get paid to do? This is what, how you make money and how you get paid. Anybody here? One guy in the back. All right. At least he's honest. <laughs> You're in this because you love the sport, right? You like sitting there and watching fights. Seriously fucking think about when those lights go down that night and the music starts to play. You know what I mean? Whatever Weidman decides to come out to this time, ain't no sunshine when it's on. <laughs> and he comes walking out. Holy shit. It's going to be fucking awesome. And when they're standing across and he, he tells them to go, it's just going to be what it is. There's no better way to cap off an entire year of sick fights, the most amazing year we've ever had, than with this main event, man. It's just, I, I cannot wait. Why no primetime for it? Um, the problem with doing a primetime is, primetime is expensive as hell. And it, it's, it's just not airing in a place where we're getting the right amount of viewers. So is it done? No, it's on hiatus. Hmm. Not done. So countdown shows will be the feature. Mm -hmm. and, and this is uh, Johnson's third time main eventing on Fox. Do you feel like now you could put a main event of a pay-per-view? Like, do you feel like his stock has really risen? No one has main evented three Fox Ooh. shows. Demetrius. Yeah. Do you think he has benefited? Do you think that he is a bigger star now than he was in January before his Fox fight? It would be pretty fucking impossible for him not to be. So do you think that you, do, do you think more people know who he is? Are you asking me if I think more people know who he is by fighting on Big Fox? Will it then when he the started here and came into the UFC and nobody knew who he was? The question is more, will it translate into pay-per-view buys? Like, can he headline a show now because of uh, the benefit of being in the main event on Fox three times in one year? That's a fucking crazy question. <laughs> Seriously. Now you're just like making shit up. No, no. It's Do more people know who he is now that he's fought three times on a major network? than when he walked into the sport, you know, when we brought him in and signed a new division? I would have to say yes. So, do you think that uh, he'd probably sell more pay-per-views now than he did back then? I'd have to say yes. Hey, Dana, you, you've compared Ronda Rousey to a, a female Diaz. Was there any comments after the, uh, the, Fox, or the finale when uh, she was kind of awkward on TV in the interview with Misha and in the, uh, the post-fight with, uh, with John Anik? Was there any kind of your thoughts on just you know, kind of her... When media. Ronda Rousey burst onto the scene, you know, she was like the only female fighter that everybody knew about. Going into the Ultimate Fighter, um, and you have two women coaching against each other, um, there's never a situation where 100% of the people are going to like Ronda Rousey, and nobody's going to like Misha Tate. You're going to have people who like Ronda and people who like Misha. Misha, ha I mean, Ronda hates Misha. Probably worse than Misha hates Ronda, you know? And, um, you know, she, you see how she is. Did you see her on, uh, on um, Jimmy Kimmel? You know what I mean? She did an interview with Jimmy Kimmel and everything. When Misha is there, I mean, that's the way, that's the way Rhonda acts when she's around Misha Tate. Going back to the 28th fight coming up, Whiteman, it's over rematch. And I, I don't know how much day-to-day -day contact you have face-to-face -face with at any given time, but one thing for those of us who do cover uh, the UFC that we see from Anderson, you know, Anderson has a lot of traveling companions that other fighters don't have. He's got his own security team. He's got Steven Seagal and Usher. And I think it was the uh, the Sonnen rematch where he had the workout with there was like eight grappling guys, and you know that's I mean it makes him unique. Do you know if he has changed anything in that sort of? The, the, the entourage of the organization, if that loss to Weidman, you know, uh, inspired him to do anything differently, or is it just straight ahead? I have no idea. That, I don't know the answer to that, but that is the situation that is absolutely typical when a guy becomes as big as Anderson Silva has become. Um, you see it with anybody who becomes as huge as he is, especially, I mean, as big as he is around the world, and, and he's even bigger in Brazil, I mean, he's huge. He's working on his wrestling more. That's what happens. 
Hmm? He's working on his wrestling more. It's one of the things that he's changed. That would be a fantastic idea. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a fantastic idea. Did you have a date or venue for 172? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do, but um, I don't have the deal yet, okay. so I can't announce it. Rich Franklin said he wants one more fight. Do you want to give him one more? Talk to Rich Franklin um, a couple days. Ago. Yeah, a couple days ago we're meeting on Friday on Monday. In Vegas. Do you want? Do you want him to fight one more? He can time? do whatever he wants to do. And um, the uh, that show that you have coming out, the fighters, on uh, Discovery, right? Yeah. Um, is this uh, your entry into the world of boxing? I don't know. I I think that n not not the, my entry into the world of boxing. It's my um, I don't know. It's it's me me trying to uh, kind of showcase this unique world of boxing it's kind of an inside look it's different than it's different what i know it's not what people expect it to be people are like eh, he's doing the ultimate fighter with with boxing it's not it's not what it is it's completely different than the ultimate fighter and to be honest with you honestly to answer your question honestly what i'm hoping first of all you, do you do you even have any idea what a massive win it is for me to get a boxing show on the discovery channel think about that to get a boxing show, you know, um, the next great champ, uh, the contender, you know, and there's there's nothing out other than HBO. Nobody else really covers boxing, you know. So for me sure. to get just to get this show on the air and, and and never mind on the air, but on Discovery, is such a huge win already, such a huge win. So hopefully, what I'm hoping for is that people like the show. People get into it and it does well. Then the next season, that's when we really start to shake things up. So what is the format if it's not the Ultimate Fighter? It's character driven. It's more of a character driven show. If you ever, I mean, how many of you guys came from boxing? Any of you ever been around boxing? I mean, it's a fucking crazy world, man. There's some, there's some really crazy people involved in, I mean, characters, you know what I mean? Character type guys involved in boxing. And I think it's unique, I think it's interesting. And uh, rather than go the route of contender, uh, you know, next great champ, ultimate fighter, we took another direction. We took another, uh, something that we think is unique and interesting. And hopefully people agree with us and want to watch it and, and people care. And then we'll really, really shake it up in season two, so. And why Discovery? We, we pitched it. We pitched the oh. show and, and Discovery took it. Yeah. Okay. And you Do you have any idea how huge that is? And, and when it's you say huge. the second season, does that mean live events? When you no. say, will no. you, will you ever I said, this will really shake things up in season two. Will you ever put on a, a live boxing event? Will this, could this lead to that? I have no plans um, to, to, to get involved in boxing, you know, and I know that, I know how the boxing guys are. <laughs> And they're all going to look and go like, what the fuck is he doing? And, you know, trying to do this and that. It's for the good of everybody. It's not just for, you know, believe me, I've got enough work to do. This is, this is for boxing and for the sport. And, and hopefully this can lead to something, uh, something even better for the sport of boxing. This is me paying my respect to the sport that if it didn't exist, I wouldn't even be sitting here right now. And how involved are you in the show? Like, are you on the show? No, I'm not on the show. I'm the executive producer, so. And how many episodes is it? Eight. That's it? Mm -hmm. Did you get any, any response um, one way or the other from any uh, promotions, Golden Boy, Top Rank? Uh, no, I'm friends with the guys at Golden Boy, you know. Um, I'm sure they're wondering what the hell I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Um, any, any attention that's brought toward boxing and, and uh, any positive feedback, it helps all of them, so. I'm not even in that business, so you know it's it's not like I'm look out, Oscar. I'm coming to take over. It's um, uh, you know we'll see where this thing goes. We see you on the any other FX or FXX uh, program <laughs> in 2014. <laughs> Probably not. I, I, uh, I had no intentions of doing that one. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Thanks for asking. You good? Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Hey, Merry Christmas, everybody, all right?